What is up guys, it is Mike. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about my desk setup 2022 style. This is my dual computer desk setup that I do both my professional work where I work in IT and my creative work, which you see here on YouTube. This is a both Windows and Mac setup that I have on this huge 70 inch tabletop. So today's video, we're gonna cover all the ins and outs of my 2022 desk setup. Maybe there's some things that you could take away from it, use it in your own setup. Let's get right into it. Now the brains of the operation is gonna be the 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch. It has 32 gigs of RAM and two terabyte storage. And now I chose a 16 inch over the 14 inch when I was working at my desk or away and the device is not in clamshell mode. I wanna have the biggest display possible. My only regret is it is kinda of heavy. I did take it on vacation, which would be, you know, it's kinda of heavy to carry that, but it is a workhorse. It's a, it's a beast, I love it. Uh, I do wish I had silver and not space gray only because I feel like space gray is kinda of just old hat at this point. Now that is connected to the studio monitor and depending on the time of day, it's also connected to the LG 5K, which I'll talk about in just a moment. The studio display is the primary display that I use with my MacBook Pro. It is also the, uh, I think probably the best quality display I've had the chance to use much more so than the LG 5K. It has high pixel density, you know, whether you're using it in max resolution or minimum resolution for the display, you still get pixel perfect rendering and color accuracy, which are two things that I need when I'm working at this computer with video. Now that in addition to, there are three USB-C ports that are on the back, they're USB 2 Gen 2, so they're 10 gigabit per second, and I have plugged into there the uh, Logi Bolt adapter for my MX Master 3 mouse, and then I also have my audio interface and my uh, camera switcher running into there as well. Now the next display I have plugged into my MacBook Pro, depending on the time of day, is gonna be the LG 5K Ultrafine. Now this is a 5K display that runs on Thunderbolt. It's connected to my MacBook Pro. Uh, when I'm doing creative work, if I'm not doing creative work, it's plugged into my Windows machine from work where it's complete overkill. I don't need that high a pixel density. I don't need that kind of screen size, uh, but it, it does do the job and I wasn't gonna buy a second monitor just for having my computer here at work. The LG 5K is on a Ergotron LX desk monitor arm, which raises it up about six inches from the tabletop itself and I have the ability to maneuver in a whole bunch of positions. Now, the reason why I chose that monitor arm is because when I'm not working uh, at my traditional job, when I'm in IT, I actually use that monitor with my MacBook Pro, but I don't use it in a horizontal orientation. I use it in vertical orientation. I'm a big uh, vertical orientation person, though I am probably on the kind of cusp of going back to just one monitor because it's a small room, right? I don't have that much space and I don't want to make it cluttered and I don't want to feel like I'm like, I don't want to feel cluttered. Now the foundation for my setup is this tabletop that I have here. It is a sit stand desk from Autonomous and I think Smart Desk Core. The tabletop itself is 72 inches wide by 30 inches deep and it will raise from 29 and a half inches at a sitting position all the way up to 48 inches tall when you're standing. Now the tabletop can move over 250 pounds according to Autonomous. I've never tested it though. I don't know the total weight of my desk right now. Now this desk, when I originally bought it, I loved it because of the size of the tabletop. Now kind of being in my office, which is 11 across by 10 wide, it's a little bit too big. So if I were to buy another standing desk, I would probably get something that's a little bit narrower only so it doesn't take up so much room. Now the desk itself, I bought it in white with white legs. So when I'm here recording or on a video call with this light here, the tabletop will reflect acting as a fill kind of and brightening up the scene a little bit more without having to turn up the lights so bright and to such a high degree. It is starting to show signs of wear, which I really, I guess I didn't expect at this point where there are some marks from, you know, things hitting the tabletop and like nicks in the finish. So I don't know if I would necessarily buy this tabletop again, but I do like the idea of sit stand. I have it right now in a, at a 35 inch position, which is where I use it when I'm sitting on a stool. Otherwise it's at 29 and a half. For me, I only raise it when I do unboxing. So I put some type of gear on top of the tabletop and I use it to do unboxings, which is a little bit easier to stand and do an unboxing than it is to do an unboxing while you're sitting down. Now on top of the table, is a desk riser, a monitor riser that I'm using from Grovemade. This is the Grovemade desk shelf. It is in matte white and I do have the desk tray. The riser itself is 330 bucks for it. I've only had it a couple months because it's a brand new color that they have here. And I did buy the desk tray. I would say the desk tray is completely optional for me. It is nice to have because I have a lot of like bits and boops on my desk and I'd like to put them away. But the desk tray, I actually like it a real lot because it's holding my studio display monitor. 
So when I bought this, I didn't have the great ergonomics on it and I wanted to raise it up, put it on a box, I put it on several other kind of different things and it wasn't high enough. So opposed to swapping out the stand for the tilt and height adjustable for I think it's 300 bucks, I bought this Grove made desk shelf for 330 and it gave me a little bit more functionality because not only am I raising up the monitor to a good height so I can not get, you know, cricks in my neck. I am also getting the ability to store things on my desk as well and hide things, making it a little bit more cleaner of a desk setup because really I'm going for functionality and aesthetics in this setup. Now I do have two different sets of peripherals that I use with this setup. I use either the Apple Magic Keyboard 2 with Touch ID because you know I don't want to authenticate via my watch. I don't want to type my password again and Touch ID on this keyboard is the same exact functionality or same exact implementation as it is on the MacBook Pro. Uh, and the MacBook Air as well. I do have the uh, Logitech MX Master 3, which is uh, the newer mouse that they just have that came out. It is super quiet. Like it's just, it's so quiet. You can't even tell here. Here's the old one. You can hear that. Now here's the new one. There's a huge difference. And the reason why it's, it makes a difference to me is when I'm on a podcast, I might be recording something. You don't want those clicks to come through on the audio recording, even though they're easily be removed through editing. It's just, I don't want them to hear there. It's just more work. So I do have that. Now behind the MX Master 3 is gonna be my wrist rest. This is the Carpio from Delta Hub. It's in white and orange and it matches over the overall aesthetic of white, gray, and orange uh, on my desk. So I use this obviously to brace my wrist and so that it doesn't uh, get uh, fatigued very easily while sitting at my desk all day doing work between both those jobs. In addition to the Magic Keyboard 2, I am also using the Magic Trackpad 2 while I'm video editing. Otherwise, it's staying underneath my desk, kind of out of the way. This is all sitting on top of this very colorful, geometric-shaped um, desk pad, desk mat, desk pad. It's sitting on top of this geometrically-shaped, very colorful desk mat that I love to death. I, I've actually bought two of them because the other one got ruined, uh, but I do like it a lot, and it is it adds a nice, colorful aesthetic to the desk when I'm sitting here using it. I don't like the plainly colored ones. I want a little bit more kind of vibrant uh, color here in my desk setup to give, I don't know, to make it more fun. In terms of storage, I have a couple different configurations for storage. I have cold storage, which is the Lassie Thunderbolt Dock 2. Uh, this is configured in a two disc RAID 0, both 12 terabytes a piece. And overall, I'd say I am happy with the drive, but it is quite loud, so I don't have it connected all the time. I really use this to back up and store all of my project media once the project's been completed. I delete the, you know, I delete the project, save the B-roll, which is really probably the, the most valuable thing, uh, and then uh, archive it at some point after 12 months. After cold storage, I do have a scratch drive, which is the C Bolt 3, uh, which is discontinued, but when I bought it, I got it at a phenomenal deal. Uh, I think it originally cost like $19.99 or $1,999, and I got it for $550 or $600 on b &H when it was going out of, uh, when it was being discontinued. So I got a killer deal on it, which is the reason why I keep it. It is two NVMe one terabyte drives that can be in RAID zero, but I use them as a single ter uh, two terabyte drive. And this is where I put all my projects while I'm working on them if I don't wanna keep them on my computer. Now everything is connecting to my computer via the Thunderbolt 4 dock from OWC. This is $299 and I think I reviewed it about a year and maybe half ago at this point. This dock has 11 different ports on there including three Thunderbolt downstream ports where you can still daisy chain multiple Thunderbolt devices together uh, before getting to your dock. You have an upstream Thunderbolt port. You have three USB-A ports on the back. You have one USB-A port on the front for charging, a headphone jack, an SD card reader, there's a lot of different ports. So it gives me a lot of flexibility. And what I do is I have my cold storage, my uh, big drive from Le Cee plugged into that. I have my Bolt 3 plugged into that. And then on occasion, I'll plug in other various accessories. In addition to having everything going from my displays into that dock, depending on how I have it configured at that moment. You'll have my camera going in here, my camera switcher. So there's a lot of flexibility in here, which again, that's what I need because this is where I'm doing all my shooting at. This is where I'm doing all my work at. So I get like that flexibility, which it gives me. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention the screen bar halo from BenQ, which is sitting on top of my studio display. This is a thing that you never think that you really need. And once you get it, you're like, wow, I don't know how I live without this. This is a three stage light for your computer. And what it does is it can sit on front of your computer. There's also a light in the back, so it could illuminate the back or it could do both the front and back. This controller module will control the color temperature, the brightness, uh, the background, it'll choose whether it's the uh, front light or the back light as well. And it's actually kind of cool because again, you don't ever really think that you need this until you have it. And I just really enjoy using this, especially when I'm in here and all the lights are off, I'm doing editing or I'm working. Uh, these lights come off because they get 
quite kind of hot in here in the small room. And uh, again, it just makes the experience and the atmosphere much more enjoyable when you have this turned on. This is the Screen Bar Halo from BenQ. I love it. Now, let me know if you have any questions about anything I talk about in the video. My name is Mike. Make sure you're subscribed because I have another video coming your way regarding my Studio Display full review and some iPadOS 15, iPadOS 16 content. I'll talk to you in the next one.